Okay, show of hands. Who still believes that the sun goes around the Earth? <laughs> Nobody. Oh, but everybody used to. It sure looks like it does. The sun comes up in the east, the sun goes down in the west. The sun comes up in the east again, so the sun goes around the Earth. It seems intuitively irrefutable. And it is so. But it's not true. The sun doesn't go around the Earth. Everybody knows that, but only now. So why do people still believe the moon goes around the Earth? It's not true either. We have to go back over 500 years to begin to get an idea of how hard it is for science to change universally accepted facts. Nicholas Copernicus, around 1510, was the first to propose a heliocentric, sun-centered solar system. But he didn't do it publicly. Copernicus privately circulated letters to other astronomers, explaining why the accepted fact of an Earth-centered solar system should be scrapped in favor of a more straightforward, more astronomically correct, sun-centered solar system. Copernicus's difficulty in promoting the sun-centered solar system depended on another bold conceptual innovation, that the Earth rotates. Copernicus's concept of a rotating Earth flew directly in the face of five literal statements in the Bible that the Earth was founded on a fixed foundation never to be moved. And the Catholic Church wasn't about to let that worldview be challenged or changed. Copernicus had too much to lose to go public with his revolutionary, pun intended, heliocentric theory as a churchman himself. 100 years later, Galileo Galilei wasn't so reticent. Galileo had observational proof to back him up because he had a telescope. In early 1610, Galileo first observed the moons of Jupiter and kept track of their orbits. Yes, the moons of Jupiter do orbit around Jupiter. They go round and round the giant planet in actual orbits, unlike, as we shall soon see, how our moon travels around the sun with the Earth. Galileo became famous, or infamous, as the case may be, because he discovered orbital motions that were not heliocentric, that did not fit the accepted worldview. It rattled civilization's Earth-centered cosmology. Galileo was indeed revolutionary. Later in 1610, Galileo observed through his telescope, which only had an aperture of one and a half inches, the planet Venus going through phases, just like the moon goes through stages. Galileo wrote that Venus imitates the moon in Latin in his notebook. There could be no other explanation for these observations. Venus was orbiting the sun. People were afraid to look through Galileo's telescope when he set it up in the great square of Pisa. They were too scared to have their worldview revolutionized. Strange as it may seem, we are experiencing something similar to that now concerning the moon orbiting the sun and acting like a double planet with Earth. People, scientists included, stubbornly persist in viewing the moon as its clever official International Astronomical Union name. It's a moon of the Earth orbiting around the Earth, showing its different phases throughout the lunar month, or moonth, as moon fans sometimes like to call the 29 and a half day cycle of lunar phases. Moon lovers' favorite day of the week, of course, is Moon Day. It comes right after Sunday. But back to the science. It's how our school books portray the phases of the moon. It's what people believe now. Notice how the Earth is the moon's center, and how it goes around the Earth in a circular path. This is the geocentric view of the moon. It's what we see from Earth. The moon comes up, the moon goes down. The moon comes up again, the moon goes around the Earth. But that's not what's happening in space. It's way past time we copernicus size the moon. We need to start seeing the moon from a heliocentric point of view, as we do for everything else in the solar system. First of all, the geocentric view of the moon's phases shows the Earth stationary, sitting in the center of the moon's path for a whole moon, th uh, month. But the Earth is not stationary at all. We're zooming around the sun at a very high speed anywhere between 66 and 68,000 miles an hour. Therefore, any picture of the moon going around a stationary Earth is profoundly misleading and really outright wrong. The heliocentric view of the Earth and moon moving together in space should look something like this. Notice that the moon is not going around the Earth. It's traveling along with the Earth, around the sun. 
The path of the moon around the sun is a sinusoidal path back and forth, back and forth, across the ever forward moving path of the Earth. Notice that the moon always goes forward too. It doesn't ever go backward to either the sun or the Earth. By always moving forward and sinusoidal, the path of the moon does not qualify as an orbit in the same sense that the other moons of the solar system orbit their planets in elliptical paths. Therefore, it is wrong to say the moon orbits the Earth. The moon orbits the sun along with the Earth, or the moon and the Earth both orbit the sun, are statements Copernicus and Galileo would approve of. But science today has difficulty accepting a heliocentric view of the moon. Maybe there would be too many books that need to be reprinted. Maybe too many astronomy professors would have to admit that they were wrong their whole careers. Accordingly, objections are put forward to block the revolutionary heliocentric view of the moon from being universally accepted. One such objection is that the moon never leaves the Earth's gravity well, and therefore should be rightly considered a moon of the Earth, an orbital to use the astronomical term for satellite. Undoubtedly, the moon never leaves the Earth's gravity well, or else we would lose the moon. However, representations of this well-known definite fact always show the moon moving around the Earth inside the gravity well. And this is not true. The moon never goes back toward the Earth as it would need to if it were in an elliptical orbit. So the gravity well objection can be dismissed because the astronomers who propose as orbital evidence that the moon always stays within the Earth's gravity well fail or neglect to include the facts of the moon's continuously forward sinusoidal motion. Escape velocity for the moon to leave Earth's gravity well is reported to be about 2,684 miles per hour. Relative to the Earth, the moon presently moves about 2,238 miles per hour. What kind of impact would it take to accelerate the moon that extra 450 miles per hour needed to knock it out of Earth's gravity well? If anyone wants to compute that, you're most welcome to put your answer in the comments section. Maybe it could happen, and that would not be good. There's another objection to looking at the moon from a heliocentric point of view. And that involves the barycenter of the Earth-Moon system. The barycenter is the center of gravity between the Earth and the Moon. Think of yourself on a seesaw in the park. The other end of the seesaw is a massive lineman from a professional football team. How far forward towards you would the lineman have to move so that you both are balanced evenly? He'd have to move towards you almost to the center of the seesaw. You are the Moon and the lineman is the Earth. Although Earth is a feminine name. The balance point of the Earth-Moon system, the barycenter, is over 1,000 miles inside the Earth. It is this balance point, astronomers dutifully point out, that is orbiting the Sun. It is a heliocentric point of view. Copernicus and Galileo would approve. However, these astronomers always seem to add the geocentric animation of the Moon orbiting around the Earth, with the barycenter inside. In this way, they can keep the Moon orbiting around the Earth. But it's somewhat dishonest to combine two different perspectives in one animation. <laughs> you can't have your cake and eat it too. This leads us directly to the real sticking point that keeps us from believing that the Moon is orbiting the Sun, the double planet conundrum. The International Astronomy Union refuses to consider the Moon and Earth a double planet. They refuse to do so almost exclusively because the very center of the Earth-Moon system is inside the Earth. It's tough to buck City Hall, as the saying goes. You'll recall that IAU, or UAI if you use the French designation, demoted Pluto to dwarf planet status. And they still haven't reversed that decision, despite seemingly ample evidence that Pluto is the ninth planet. Perhaps we should reflect on what it means to be an Earthling. To be an Earthling implies that we know ourselves to be space-born people orbiting a yellowish star near the outskirts of a spiral galaxy. We, meaning all the peoples of Earth, live in space and are absolute creatures from space. Above us is the Moon, Earth's companion. We're making a big mistake by referencing the Moon according to our geocentric parameters. Our conceptual expansion into space is inhibited by an incorrect, outdated, Earth-bound view of the Moon. The universe doesn't revolve around us, and neither does the Moon. <laughs>